To color outside the lines, all you need is fresh ink. Break convention and bend the rules with stories that range from contemporary adventure and romance to fantasy and science fiction and address topics as diverse as identity, poverty, coming out, gun violence, first love, and more. I am reading to you today from Fresh Ink, an anthology of short stories, and my selection is from One Voice by Melissa De La Cruz. Graffiti. The white spray-painted message glowed on the sandstone bricks of Jordan Hall. Couldn't miss it, even if I wanted to. A big middle finger and a particularly shocking phrase smack in the middle of my Monday morning, reminding me that, even at what you thought was your prestigious cosmopolitan university, the one you had worked so hard to attend, Someone will try to make you feel like you're an imposter. A warning not to get too comfortable. I'll give the tagger this much credit. He or she was bold choosing this spot, knowing so many students passed through the quad. Even if you didn't see it, gossip was spreading fast. Lab partners. My first class that morning, microbiology. The graduate student running the lab asked us to evaluate different water samples for bacteria. As I prepared a dilution of the sample, my group chatted about what else? The graffiti. It's so awful, Yen Yen said, passing me the pipette. She had seen a photo of the hate scrawled on the wall. I placed a drop of the diluted solution onto a petrofilm plate. We had to wait for the gel to form so we could count bacteria colonies and determine the level of water impurity. Nate leaned back in his stool. Though his large basketball player hands tapped out a rhythm on the table, his eyes burned with having dealt with this kind of hate his whole life. It's business as usual to me. He pulled the hood of his gray sweatshirt off his head his thick black hair was a frizz from not brushing it before class. Everyone pretends to be scandalized, but people say racist stuff all the time. It's just out in the open now. You think anyone's going to do something about it? Hell no. Yen Yen looked up at me with sadness in her eyes. She was expecting me to say something, but I didn't want to have this conversation and couldn't think of anything to say despite the difficulty of moving to a new place that was so different from home. I'd gotten comfortable with the brick archways of the campus gates and the crimson flowers filling the flower beds. Stanford was a kind of home, but the graffiti had disturbed me in a way I hadn't expected. Intellectually, I understood I probably wasn't in any sort of physical danger, but I was still unsettled. It compounded this feeling that no matter what I did right, someone was watching, waiting to pull me out of line, throw me in a detention center, then on an airliner with a one-way ticket to the Philippines or wherever. What do you think, Jasmine? Nate had stopped tapping the desk. I don't know, I said. It's not something I was expecting around here. It's wild how one thing like that can make you feel so unsafe, Yen Yen said. Words matter as much as actions, I added. They might only be letters on a wall, but I feel like the graffiti claimed my mental space. Yen Yen pulled the film off the dish, revealing red dots of bacteria colonies. Think they'll find out who did it? Nah, Nate said, marking his notebook, recording the number of bacteria. I saw them power washing the paint off on my way here. Give it a day. Everyone will forget. Not me, Yen Yen said. I felt conflicted. It might seem weird, but power washing the graffiti so quickly seemed to add to the injustice. 
It's like the administration wanted to erase the fact that the racist message ever appeared. It's not like I wanted to read those words every day walking to class, but I didn't want the words to simply disappear. I wanted everyone to see the truth that even Stanford wasn't free from this type of hate. And this has been an excerpt from Fresh Ink.